Hello, everyone. My name is Javier, and this is work in collaboration uh, with many other people from Northeastern and MIT. So let me start just with a brief story. Um, I was taking a course of autism and technology one year ago, uh, taught by Matthew Goodwin and Professor Rosalind Picard. Basically, we learn about the basis of autism and how we can improve it or make their life easier with technology. Um, among other things that we did in that course, uh, we did a field trip to the Groden Center. Uh, for those who don't know that uh, this is a school, a nonprofit school for autistic individuals. Um, and basically, they, they take classes and behavioral interventions and all those things. Actually, that was, that was my first time that I, I had like a real life um, experience of seeing how these environments work. And actually, it had like very profound um, impact on me because it was kind of challenging to see um, all the problems that they have, um, problem behavior, um, like self-injury, like rocking, hand flapping. All those things are very bad for the social life, not only them, but also the people around them. Um, so we asked them to the therapist, how, what do you do or how can we improve this? And I said, look, we have behavioral interventions, which basically we go around, we annotate all these um, behaviors that are happening, we use pen and paper, and then we just try to track these behaviors, understand them a little bit better, and see if we can create some interventions to address these um, specific problems for each person. Um, and we were very surprised because this is like very rudimentary, you know, like you have a notepad, you just write on that, and then you expect that to be useful somehow. Um, so we continued speaking with them and they told us that there are a lot of problems with this method. Of course, it's human uh, prone error um, because you just write it down, it's very slow. And that means that um, if you are in a challenging behavior um, setting, like for example, you have your, your kid and he's uh, self-injury, then you're not going to annotate it in that specific moment. Probably you are going to do it afterwards and you're going to forget about some specific details. So we were thinking, okay, how can we improve that? And we, how can we leverage the, the capabilities of current cell phones or uh, these technologies that we have all around? So after one year speaking with these therapists and going around and see what we could do, um, we developed this application. Um, this application, as you can see, um, it has several parts. It's meant to be very simple and very customizable. So there are like three different parts that you can customize. Um, there is the, the name of the participant that you're going to make the annotations with. Like for example, you have like several kids in your room, so you might want to change that for uh, different kids. Um, also the groups of activities or events, like for example here we were very interested in annotating the activities of the children, like for example the classes that they were taking, and also the challenging behavior. So for example, if they were doing hand flapping or rocking. And the part of customization is very important because as you know, each individual is totally different from the other. Um, we put all, the, all this application online, so you can just go, download it. Also, we want to give the, the code to everyone so they can just change it, adapt it, and modify it, and hopefully improve it and share it with the rest of the world. Um, some of the capabilities of the, to, this tool, if you are interested in using it, are like recording of multimodal information. So for example, you can just um, take the, the cell phone and just take a video of it, or you can record audio, and you, you can make all these types of annotations. There are different types of annotations, like for example, you just click once, so if you want to keep track of repetitive behavior, like for example, some verbal, uh, and you want to count them, then you just click once. There are others that you may want to click the on and offset, um, so for example, classes and things like that. And there are others that you just click on it and then it just keeps asking you every certain amount of seconds if something is happening, like for example, oh, is he having problem behavior? Um, just to keep track for a long time, and you don't have to be uh, thinking about it all the time. Um, of course, if you don't predefine all the events uh, at the moment, we have the possibility, like the other button, so basically it allows, like, from speech, um, using speech recognition, to automatically add buttons, like, for example, oh, I see problem behavior, and just automatically ask that event. Of course, you need to visualize all this information, so you can easily customize the things, you can share it, um, with other people, you can send them over email, you can just create an express sheet, and all those are capabilities of the current application. So some of the main capabilities of this application versus some other things is that it's very portable, you can just um, have it 24-7, uh, any point in time, you can just take it to the street, you can take it to the classroom. It's very scalable, so we use Android, so basically any um, 
device that you have Android on it, you can use it. It's very inexpensive because we use the current capabilities of the smartphones. Uh, it's customizable, as I said before, and it's reliable. Right now you can just annotate and you can forget about the pen and paper annotations. So we, take, we took this application and we went to the Groden Center again and we gave them to the teachers and therapists that were speaking with us through, throughout the process. So basically we gave it to eight teachers and we asked them, um, can you um, just annotate the behavior of your children for half a day? So they annotated the behavior and then we evaluated a little bit their experience with the application. So some results can be seen in this survey. I'm not going to bother with the details, but basically they were very happy about having something new besides the pen and paper annotation method. Um, the study was very short, it was just half a day um, because of course there are some privacy problems and we need to make like more uh, thorough protocols for that. Um, but they, we got very positive feedback. They, they thought that it was accurate, reliable. Um, actually one of the kids really enjoyed playing with this uh, application or annotating his uh, behavior because he fell in control of all the things and uh, the, the time that he was spending on things. And of course we got positive feedback of, okay, what kind of size they want, they probably want something that you can hold it in one hand, but they want it bigger than a cell phone um, because they want to quickly annotate the events without spending too much time looking for the events. So what is the long-term vision of this? Um, so ideally, um, because we have it on cell phones and devices, parents, uh, teachers, doctors, uh, they would use something similar. Not necessarily this application, hopefully an iteration of this application. And the idea is that all these annotations will go to a common server where we are when, going to collect all these behaviors and contextual information of when these behaviors are happening. We are also considering adding like uh, physiological sensors like Jim was mentioning this morning. So these sensors have the, the potential of capturing the arousal levels of the child. So for example, if you are continuously gathering this information, you could correlate that with the events and see, for example, if they get more stress when they are around certain people and things like that. And hopefully at the end, if you have all this information and you can better understand that specific individual, you will be able to create better behavioral interventions. Thanks.